Welcome to this week's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. Come on, baby. That's a giant. With James Holtz and the IDO fishing team. On the ice, chasing the hottest bites. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> this is so much fun. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Hey everybody, James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors. Today is the second week of December and I'm gonna take my first steps on ice for this season, which is about two weeks later than is typical. Normally we're on the ice right after Thanksgiving and as many of you ice heads know, this year has been a late start to the ice fishing season 2011. But we finally got ice and what we need to do now is we need to proceed with a little bit of caution. From what we can see from the road, uh, we've got uh, glare ice as far as the eye can see and one whopper of a pressure ridge out about 150 yards. So I'll be fishing with Grant Sorensen today and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick our way with spuds out very slowly, very carefully, and we're gonna be carrying some uh, safety picks either in our pocket or around our neck. Those two pieces of equipment the spud and those safety picks will allow us to go out, check the ice conditions, and get back safely. I did not want to do this either early in the morning before the sun came up or when towing all of our fishing gear. If I need to retreat, I want to be able to beat feet and reverse very quickly. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to get out on early ice, hopefully chase up some huge walleyes. Uh, it's late morning. We've got a little bit of uh, cloud cover coming in here midday. It's supposed to roll right back out, and by later this afternoon, we should be set for some big walleyes on first ice, and maybe even a fantastic sunset. So stick around. Well, we're on the ice. We got all the gear set up here, and of course, it's just natural to be excited, to want to just grab those ice houses and just start towing to the spot you want to get to. Early ice, you need to hold back a little bit. Uh, we know we've got three, four, maybe even five inches of ice from some of the anglers we've talked to, but we're not seeing anybody out there fishing. And as I mentioned in the intro, we do have a section of ice out here that's really broken up. So we're gonna leave the otters and the augers right where it's at, and we're gonna start spudding our way out towards that break, just to make sure that we've got the ice we need to do this safely. One more piece of safety gear that's an absolute mandatory for anybody coming out here this time of year is a set of safety spikes. And what these will do, keep them around your neck. If you fall through, they've got a little plunger that holds a spike at the end. And uh, anglers will wear them around their neck or put them in their outside pocket, just as long as they're easily accessible. And this is your uh, get out of jail free card should you go through the ice. If you fall through, it's so hard to get out, but with these spikes, you can get good grip and good leverage and pull yourself free. So. A spud bar like this collapsible Frable. These safety spikes, also again, made by Frable. Very cheap insurance to make sure that your first day on the ice isn't your last. You know, so often early ice, uh, with no snow cover like this, you get a lot of light penetration and the best bite is early in the morning, late in the day. And uh, for that reason, I would have loved to have been out here just before sunrise. But uh, this kind of crack is what really had Grant and I worried. You know, that's not wide enough for a person to fall through, but it's definitely a, a day wrecker should you put your foot through there and break your leg. So I can see here, we're looking at about four or five inches of hard, clear ice, but I'm gonna go down the shore in that direction a little bit. I think I'll send Grant in that direction. And what we're looking for is a place where these two sheets have push back together and I'm real confident that we'll be able to just step across and do so safely. One of the things I love about this Frable spot is it's heavy and it's sharp in front. I uh, joke with Grant, it kind of hits like the hammer of Thor. If it doesn't break through, I feel awful darn confident about doing something like that. There's probably close to six inches of ice back there. Well, this won't be any problem. Uh, I can see how we're gonna be able to get uh, on and off again safely. So it's uh, back for the otters and we should be uh, out there in time to uh, see if there's any midday bite out here. First ice. First ice walleye for 2011 right here. We're out on some fresh, hard, clean ice. It's about as good as it's gonna get all year long. Nice fish here. I'm gonna say, oh, look at this, you can see the fish right under the ice. There she is, whoa, <laughs> right there. 
that's cool. Well, I know what I got before I get it, that's for sure. Circling the hole there. See that big old white belly? Come here, sweetheart. All right, there we go. That's kickoff 2011. We got about four or five inches of perfect ice, no snow. It really bodes well for a great, safe 2011 season for all of us that have these kind of conditions. You have the pliers here. What I love about this time of year is we got all winter long to spend time convincing these fish they should eat. This time of year, they're still all tuned up from the fall, aggressive, chasing baits. We can't get where we wanna go. We're out here, four or five inches of ice on the edge of a flat. We're nowhere near deeper water. We're of course where we'd like to be, out near some structure, but still, these fish are so aggressive, they're still in that feeding mode, so they're up here chasing bait on this flat. I don't know that we've got a six inch depth change in 100 yards in any direction, but this is as far as we can go and feel good about it and the fish are here. So uh, stick around everyone, In-Depth Outdoors, Early Ice 2011. Gold, sweetheart. <laughs> now that's the way to start it, you know? Everybody loves this time of year. It's fairly warm, I mean, cold enough to make ice, but we're not out here fighting bitterly cold temperatures. We've got a little bit of wind today, but it actually feels pretty good. And one of the things I love about early ice is there's just no company, there's no crowds yet. Not that I'm antisocial, but I tell you what, there's something special about being out here, the first guy on any given body of water, doing it safely, of course, and getting on some fish when everybody else is sitting at home, you know, getting their ice house ready. We're here doing it. There's an old saying, you can give a man a fish, or teach him how to fish. But what if you gave him something that taught him how to fish better? Smarter. Faster. Seems like you've made a happy man. Markham. Tech that makes anglers happy. Some would have you believe things aren't built to last anymore. At Otter Outdoors, every day starts with the same three questions. Is it tougher? Is it stronger? Is it smarter? If the answer is no, we toss it out and start over. With the legendary Otter Sled, it's built tougher. With a 900 denier shell, it's built stronger. With an extensive line of accessories, it's built smarter. Otter products are built with the hardcore ice angler in mind. Now that's something you can believe in. Mind if I fish with you guys? No, but if you're using custom jigs and spins lures, you better get a bigger bucket. With custom jigs and spins, new tungsten heavy metal jigs, you'll get down to the big ones quickly and catch more and bigger fish. These jigs have been designed by world-renowned Croatian ice fisherman Czechai Matt. Czechai number one with Czechai lures fishing. Go Czechai, go! So when you use custom jigs and spins, try the new tungsten heavy metal ice jigs. Custom jigs and spins, the hottest bait below the ice. Thorne Brothers is your ice fishing headquarters, offering a huge selection of ice fishing gear from ice tackle to ice houses. Thorne Brothers has the best prices on brands you rely on to help you put more fish on the ice. Looking for a custom ice rod? Our in-house custom rod shop makes the most sensitive ice rod you've ever laid your hands on. Stop into our new store located off Highway 65 in Blaine, Minnesota, or browse our large inventory online. Thorn Brothers, helping you make this your most enjoyable ice season ever. There it is. Just came in and whacked it, didn't even mark that one. Feels like a little smaller fish. Usually those small ones are extremely aggressive. There he comes. Nice fish. Nice perfect eater. Nice 15 incher right from the lake. Um, these fish live majority of their lives out in Lake Superior and they come in here to spawn, so they're they're good eating. Get them unhooked here. Using a gold gold slender spoon with the glow strip on the front. Um, with this dirty water, that glow really attracts these fish at certain times of the day. There we go. This is a perfect eating fish, so we'll keep this one today. Well, we had something happen here. That's just one of those wonderful benefits of being out here on first ice. It's not supposed to happen this way. 
We're in shallow water and we've got really sunny conditions. We're not supposed to be catching fish right now. Seven and a half, eight foot of water. And I have just had a gigantic mark come up on this LX7. Look at this. Look at that fish under the ice. It is a huge fish. I knew it was big. I'm not as familiar with the size of targets on the LX7. This is a brand new product for Markham Technologies. They just come out with it. Absolutely groundbreaking. It's the first real time LCD ever made. I'm just for getting familiarized with it. It's absolutely gonna change the way we ice fish. But until I get some hours with it, when I see great big marks, I'm really not sure what I've got, but I'm telling you what, I pegged this one. I knew it was a big fish. It's all of 28 inches. It's a giant. Here it comes. Look at this fish. Oh, what a giant. I'm gonna grab her. Okay. Come on, fish. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Terrifying is what this is. It's wonderful, it's exciting, it's terrifying. I want this fish so bad. You know, we've always said in the past when we're fishing LX5s, the old mechanical flashers, that these big fish would come up under our baits and it would, you know, be a half inch or three quarters of an inch thick. We're in such shallow water. When this fish came up underneath my spoon, it absolutely filled the screen. And this is why, come on, sweetheart. Oh. They're so hard to turn when they're this big. Wait till you see this. Yes, I love it. First ice, 2011. Absolutely would not want to be anywhere else doing anything but what I'm doing right here today, out here on the ice. When you get done watching the show, get out in the garage, get those ice rods ready. It's time. What a fish, just gargantuan. You know? That might be the biggest fish of the year for me on my first day out here on the ice. What a fish. I'm so excited. <laughs> Again, this wasn't supposed to happen. We're gearing up for what we hope is gonna be a great night of fishing. This is the kind of magic that just happens at first ice. It's why you read about it in the magazines, guys talk about it on the website forums, and you see guys like us on TV out here on three, four, five inches of safe ice chasing these monster fish. And here it is. I tell you what, time after time, trip after trip, if I have to pick one bait stained water for walleyes, it's a gold slender spoon with glow tape on the front. Absolute dynamite. <sighs> That's the result. Just an amazing fish. I'm gonna let that fish go. An incredible fight. I mean, look at the girth on that thing. Just an absolute porker. Man, what a start to the season. Get her back in there. Look at that. She just wants to go, go, go. There you go, sweetheart. Bye. Yes. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. We're about uh, three hours before sundown. We talked about it earlier how you do not want to come out here on first ice in the dark. So we didn't come out for the morning bite. We waited for later in the day so we could see what we were doing. And obviously the fish were just waiting for us, but uh, I've done enough talking. I need to get this shack flipped back over and get that spoon back down, because chances are there's more than one. Yeah. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. There's an old saying, you can give a man a fish, or teach him how to fish. But what if you gave him something that taught him how to fish better? 
smarter, faster. Seems like you've made a happy man. Markham, tech that makes anglers happy. Mind if I fish with you guys? No, but if you're using custom jigs and spins lures, you better get a bigger bucket. With custom jigs and spins, new tungsten heavy metal jigs, you'll get down to the big ones quickly and catch more and bigger fish. These jigs have been designed by world-renowned Croatian ice fisherman Czechai Matten. Czechai number one with Czechai lures fishing. Go Czechai, go! So when you use custom jigs and spins, try the new tungsten heavy metal ice jigs. Custom jigs and spins, the hottest bait below the ice. There it is. These fish do not hesitate one bit when they come up here to eat. Just got my perch sweetheart rod bent in half. Come on, girl. Big head shakes. There's my leader. And there she is. Nice fish, beautiful, healthy female. Now she is a couple inches too big to keep, so we're gonna let her go. Grab my pliers. There we go. Nice fish, and in a couple months, she will be laying some eggs. There you go, girl. Nice fish. We're not really fishing on any structure up here. We're kind of on a feeding flat and these fish move up here during low light conditions and they're up here for one reason and that is to eat. I stopped to fish this hole. You know, we don't usually mark a lot of fish in water this shallow, but as I was checking depths, I see a mark down there. You know, what's a guy to do? Of course you're gonna fish it. And we're out here about an hour and a half before sundown and we're just verifying depths to see how this flat lays out. If we can find a little deeper water, or maybe even better, kind of a funnel that pushes up into the shallow water, that's where we're gonna to wanna to focus our efforts. We can't really get where we wanna be, which is on the edge of that deep water. As it would seem, it doesn't matter. We should not be catching fish right now, and certainly later on in the winter, we won't be like we are right now, but we'll take it. This is just one of those special days, early ice, you know, really, it just iced up four days ago. We've been making about an inch of ice per day. So we've got more than plenty to support foot travel. And you know what, that fish there, I'm gonna keep him. I don't wanna count my chickens before they're hatched. You know, a guy I'll always think, you get out here, you have a start like this, the fish are just gonna keep biting, but you never know. And I'd really like to have walleye fingers for dinner tonight. I, I don't know where the walleye finger is on one of these fish, but I know that's what I'm gonna eat. So I got about 20, 25 more holes to punch, check all the depths, and by that time, we should be in prime time. There he goes. Awesome. Feels like a nice fish. Oh, already up with the hole. <laughs> nice fish. What we're doing there is jigging really aggressive, about two to three feet off the bottom. I mean, that's almost halfway down for how shallow water we're in, but really seasoned like this, these fish like a really aggressive motion to these spoons. Later in the winter, we'll slow down a little bit, but right now, they like it moving. So many times I like to have a dead stick right next to my jigging rod, but today they're not even acknowledging that bobber rod. They're just wanting these jigging spoons that are very aggressive. We're in really shallow water and we're really yanking those spoons, getting the best action that we can out of those. And these fish just come in flying 100 miles an hour and they're just smacking it. Those fish want something that's moving. I'm gonna get this one unhooked. And that's another perfect eater. Some would have you believe things aren't built to last anymore. At Otter Outdoors, every day starts with the same three questions. Is it tougher? Is it stronger? Is it smarter? If the answer is no, we toss it out and start over. With the legendary Otter Sled, it's built tougher. With a 900 denier shell, it's built stronger. With an extensive line of accessories, it's built smarter. Otter products are built with the hardcore ice angler in mind. Now that's something you can believe in.
Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. Ah, this guy's a little bit smaller. As I mentioned earlier, when I got that great big one back in uh, base camp here, starting to get a real good feel for this LX7 and what the marks mean as far as size on the flasher. That's just a real nice eater there. Not a giant by any means, but I knew it just by the size of the return on the flasher there. And you know, while I'm unhooking this fish, just want to mention real quick, you know, we keep mentioning LX7, LX7. If you followed these shows at all, in the past, it's always been LX5. And uh, of course, what that means is, we've got a new piece of ice fishing electronics this year from Markham, and this one's pretty unique. Uh, unlike all other quality ice fishing electronics of the past that were mechanical flashers, meaning there was actually a motor in there that spun, this one is the first real-time LCD unit for the ice fisherman that actually works. It's five times faster than the human eye can perceive motion. So uh, there's been a lot of LCD units that have come out for the ice fishermen and they haven't been adopted well. And the reason was there was a lot of lag time between an angler moving the target on the screen and it uh, actually moving with his hand. There was just a disconnect. This LX7 has a lot of unique features uh, in it that just weren't possible in the past with a mechanical flasher. Uh, you've got separate zoom windows from your flasher dial. You can have an open water graph with a vertical style fish finder. And uh, unlike mechanical flashers where you were really stuck to that circular dial, this unit allows you to tailor your display to the way you want to see it. You can have up to three different display styles. You get to pick what they are and where they display. And the coolest part is this unit is great out here on the ice, but it'll mount on the boat. I did mention open water graph. This unit is fully open water capable. So do yourself a favor, head to your sporting goods store, ask them if they've got an LX7, see what it's all about. I think you'll be awful impressed. You know, so often when we're out here on the ice, we're always preaching, don't fish a hole where you don't mark fish. But when you're in seven, eight foot of water like this, that just doesn't apply. Uh, your cone angle is so small. You know, one of the features of the LX7 is they've got something called a uh, sonar footprint. It tells you how much area you're actually covering with your uh, transducer setting. And uh, right here it says, I'm covering less than three foot of water, 2.8 feet. Right now I'm in the 20 degree transducer setting. I'm seeing 2.8 feet of the bottom. And the reason that's important is, just think of how unlikely it is for a fish to swim within that 2.8 foot circle the moment I drop my transducer down. If we were out in 30 feet of water, we'd have a much larger sonar footprint, which increases the likelihood that a fish is gonna be down there when we drop the transducer in the water. So when we're in this shallow water, what we'll do is we'll fish just about every hole that we've punched, we just won't do so for very long. Because we're in shallow water, the fish are so aggressive at this time of year, anything they see, they're gonna come in almost immediately to inspect. So give each hole a minute or two, but just because you're not seeing fish when you first dump that transducer in the water, doesn't mean you shouldn't fish it. I was just about ready to leave this hole. I was gonna follow my own advice. Don't spend too much time at a hole when you're not seeing fish. This one's bigger. Of course, up here in shallow, woo, that was nice. I'm gonna push this seven back just a little bit so we don't get the transducer in that line. This is a nice fish. Oh, come here, sweetheart. Yeah, come to daddy. There we go. We're getting on to prime time now. Of course, I caught that one middle of the day that uh, was this guy's grandpappy, but you know what, this is what Early ice fishing is all about a great sunset going down over the horizon. Absolutely no competition out here on the ice and very aggressive walleyes. Well, either that's a female or he takes after me at the buffet table and eats way too much and that's a guy. So we're gonna let that one go. 
super awesome fish. I'm hoping there's just a couple more of those for me here yet today before the sun disappears on us. But if not, I've got no complaints whatsoever. Bye, sweetheart. Awesome. Ah, that's one of those deals that'll be uh, mid-January. I'll be sitting in front of the uh, fireplace and thoughts of that fish help me make it through the rest of the winter. There's got to be one more down there for me, or I hope. There we are. I don't know how hard a fish can hit a bait, but I think that was to the max. This fish are just so, there she is, right under the ice here. Come on, girl. You gotta get her head up here. That is a nice, healthy fish. Very nice. We made it a couple more this evening, but if we don't, that's a perfect way to end it. Well, the way I look at it, with that sun going down the way it is, uh, if we catch a couple more fish, we're not going to have enough light to show it. So. <laughs> the sun is going fast. This is a good one to call our quits yeah. on. Everyone, thanks for being a part of uh, Grant and my first day on the ice here, 2011. It has been an incredibly enjoyable day. Just want to remind everybody that uh, memories are made out here on the ice. Uh, not sitting there at home on a Sunday wishing you were fishing. So uh, I mentioned it earlier, get out there in the garage after this show airs, uh, find those jiggle sticks, charge up the battery on that piece of electronics and get out on the ice. If you're going to get out and take advantage of the 2011 ice fishing season, it's time to do it. It's perfect. <laughs> that is a heck of a nice fish, man. And this fish's head is a little too far away from its tail for us to keep it, so we'll let it go. Sometimes as important as uh, catching a lot of great big fish is, uh, the real important things in life are uh, kind of just soaking in some of the sights and sounds. So Sure is beautiful. Thanks for sharing it with me. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. It was fun. To everybody at home, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. If you enjoyed today's show, let our sponsors know. In-Depth Outdoors is brought to you by Markham Technologies, one step ahead. Otter Outdoors, tougher, stronger, smarter. Custom Jigs and Spins, the hottest baits below the ice. FXE Snowsuit, the science of warmth. And Thorne Brothers, your fishing specialty store.